Hi everyone, welcome along to the last of this three-part series on jazz, jazz harmony and improvisation presented by Moving On Music. My name is Scott Flanagan, I'm a piano teacher, piano player, organ teacher, organ player and I've been playing the piano for about 30 years now with jazz for about 20 years. In this video today we're going to be looking at a tune called Autumn Leaves but just before we do I hope you've watched the previous two videos on the blue scale and the 251 exercise because they're really going to be important for this video. So let's talk about this tune. Autumn Leaves was written by Joseph Cosma who is a Hungarian composer and he wrote it in 1945. He lived in Paris for a lot of his life, which is why the original title for this is Les Feuilles Mortes, or directly translated, The Dead Leaves. I think Autumn Leaves is a bit nicer. Pretty much every jazz musician you'll have ever heard of has either played or recorded Autumn Leaves, and a recent study counted over 1,400 recordings, so it's possibly one of the most recorded songs of all time. Some of my favourite versions are Nat King Cole, Oscar Peterson and Miles Davis who all recorded great versions of this tune. And the reason why it's endured for so long is that like so many of the jazz tunes from around this time, they're so adaptable. It can be played fast, it can be played slow, it can be played straight, it can be played swung, it can be played as a funk. They're very malleable tunes. And you can play them really whatever way you want, which is part of the enduring appeal of a tune like Autumn Leaves. Anyway, let's get started. Let's have a look at the tune and see why it's such a good one. So this is Autumn Leaves. This is what jazz musicians would call a lead sheet. It has just melody, just chords, which is, for the jazz musician, literally all you would need. So let's get a listen to Autumn Leaves and hear how it sounds. So this is what it sounds like without any swing in it. This is literally what the chart tells me. Now because I play jazz it means we can stretch around the rhythm, we can add a little bit of swing to it um, and I guess move around the rhythms and move around a couple of the notes and that's when you can make it sound like this. Now it starts to sound a little bit more like a jazz tune. The first thing we do whenever we look at improvising over a piece is to look for the 2-5-1 progressions. If you missed the previous video on 2-5-1s, a 2-5-1 is basically chord 2, chord 5 and chord 1 within a key. And the way that we can find them within a piece is to look for a minor 7, followed by a dominant 7th, followed by a major 7th. That's for the major key two five ones. For a minor key two five ones, it's similar. We start by looking for chord two, which is a minor seven flat five. Chord five, dominant chord, and chord one being a minor. So whenever we're considering autumn leaves, 
we see the very first three chords, C minor, F7, B flat major. That's chord two, chord five, chord one, all in the key of B flat major. So what that tells us is that the first line is in the key of B flat major. We'll come back to the E flat in just a minute. The second line, A minor seven flat five, D seven, G minor, this is chord two, chord five, and chord one, all within the key of G. And the scale we're gonna to use to improvise is G harmonic minor. So the first line, B flat major, second line, G harmonic minor. Let's look at the differences between those two scales. B flat major has two black notes, B flat and E flat. G melodic minor, sorry, G harmonic minor, has three black notes, B flat and E flat as before, but with F sharp. The differences between these two scales is just one note. In the key of G minor, F becomes F sharp. That's it, so if I play up B minor, and down G minor, There's only one note of a difference, which is F sharp in the second line. So as an improviser, that's a note that I'm going to target. I'm really going to target the F sharp in the second line because that's the one note that really stands out in the second line that we can't play in the first line. So here's what this sounds like over the chord, starting with B flat major. Second line, G harmonic minor. And this time, all the way through the first two lines, B flat major. improvising over that I didn't have any particular patterns in mind I was literally just playing up and down the scale turning around whenever I felt like I wanted to but these are all the right notes so that whenever we're improvising this is what we look at now that's the first two lines taken care of let's look at the rest of the piece in the third line we see C minor F7 B flat E flat hmm that's the same as the first line the fourth line a minor 7 flat 5, D7, G minor. It's the same as the second line. So the first four lines is really just the first two lines repeated. So what that means to improvise over is B flat major in the first line, G minor in the second line, back to B flat major for the third line, back to G minor for the fourth line. Continuing on into letter B, we have the following A minor 7, D7, G minor, Again, that's G minor. The sixth line, C minor, F7, B flat, E flat, is the same as the first line and the third line. So this is B flat major. Now we're going to skip the next line. We're going to go down to the last line. The last line, A minor, D7, G, is the same as the second line and the fourth line and the fifth line. So this is G minor as well. In the penultimate line, A minor, D, then G, C, F, B flat. This is the only departure from either G minor or B flat. The first two bars are G minor, G harmonic minor, as we looked at earlier, A minor seven and D, sorry, A minor seven flat five and D seven. But the next bit is slightly different. G minor seven and C nine, that's a two five into the key of F major. So here's an F major scale over the top of it. And then the next bit, F minor 7 and B flat, is a 2-5 into the key of E flat. Here's an E flat major scale. So over those two bars, we have a bar of F major followed by a bar of E flat major. Sounds like this, F major. E flat. 
So over that entire line, we start with G harmonic minor, F, E flat, and this is the only departure from B flat and F. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to improvise by sticking with the scales and I'll tell you which scales as we go through it. Starting with B flat major, three, four. G minor. B flat. G minor. Staying with G minor. B flat. G minor. F. E flat. G minor. So, this time, I want you to have a go. I'm going to play the chords, and I'm going to shout out the scales. Have a go. One, two, B flat. G minor. Still on G minor. B flat. G minor. F. E flat. G minor. So these are all the scales and records required for Autumn Leaves. As you can see, it's a great piece to start improvising on because we only have two scales really to worry about for most of it, B flat and G minor, with just one note that's different, the F sharp. Now, whenever jazz players like to improvise over a tune, typically what happens is that they start by improvising, uh, by playing the melody once all the way through, then somebody else, someone will improvise, then somebody else might improvise, then somebody else might improvise after that, and then they'll all play the tune together at the end. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to finish by playing a version of Autumn Leaves. So I'm going to play the melody, I'm going to improvise once over it, and then play the melody one more time. I hope you enjoy it.
So that's Once Through Autumn Leaves. I hope you were following with the scales and the chords as they went through it. I hope you've enjoyed this three-part series on jazz and jazz harmony and improvisation. Please do check out some of the other videos as well, not just piano-related ones. If you've enjoyed it, please get practicing with all of these ideas and I hope to see you at a jazz gig at some point soon. Thanks. Bye.